Uh, today I wanted to uh, show you my spiral vegetable slicer. This is a Paderno World Cuisine tri-blade slicer. And so first I want to show you what came in the box. This is the base. As you can see it has four suction cups on the bottom which will really hold it tightly to the counter. This is the crank that holds the vegetables and it slides in this way. Um, comes with three blades. This is the shredder blade and you can see it has small spacings between these cutters about an eighth of an inch. Also has a, um, a hole up here which cuts kind of a core through the vegetable and also holds it in place when you're turning the crank. There is also a chipper blade which is much like this one, it just has a larger space and which makes larger cuts. It's good for like curly fries. This one is the flat blade and uh, it will make thin slices of apples or potatoes or uh, anything that you want to be sliced like ribbon slices. So there is a compartment to store the blades uh, on this side, which is really the back side, but you can see it snaps in there really tightly so it doesn't fall out when you're using the slicer. Now sometimes it's even hard to get them out, but if you push down a little bit and before you pull, they'll come right out. So let me turn this around now, and we're going to start with the shredder blade, the smaller one. Okay, the first thing you need to do is make sure that it's firmly attached to the counter so it doesn't go sliding when you push on the handle. So if you push down on each leg of the slicer, as you can see, it is firmly in place. It's not going to go anywhere. So I want to start out first with a zucchini because we can make fantastic zucchini noodles with this. Usually I wouldn't cut the zucchini in half, but I'm going to do it uh, today just so I can show you different ways to, to use it. So let's start with some zucchini noodles. So you place the zucchini in the center of the circular uh, core cutter that I showed you earlier and then push the prongs up so it holds the zucchini in place. And then you push forward with this handle. You don't push forward with the crank, because you may break it or something if you put too much pressure on it. But this handle is for pushing forward. So you push forward, and then you just turn it, and you have beautiful spaghetti noodles. Now, you can use these to replace the pasta in your favorite spaghetti recipe. Uh, maybe you're just trying to cut down on your calories, or maybe you, you have an allergy to wheat. But they are delicious. You can eat them raw, which is the way I like to do it, or you can saute them a little bit to make them softer before you put them, uh, before you use them with your spaghetti sauce. So let me get these out of the way. Look at that. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to put these to the side, and then next I want to show you how to make a zucchini slaw. Now you saw how long those noodles were. Sometimes you don't want your noodles to be that long, um, depending on what you're fixing, but definitely for slaw I don't want them to be that long. So I'm going to take this piece of zucchini and I'm going to cut down one side of it about a half an inch. Now if you want it even shorter than that, you can um, cut the other side as well. You just have to be careful not to cut all the way through or it won't work nearly so well. Now when you finish, like I finished with my spiral uh, zucchini noodles, you have basically, a, I call it a toadstool, but this is the core that was cut out and this is a piece that's left on the end. We don't need to throw it away, just get some ranch dressing and eat it. It will be delicious. Okay, so let me show you now how to do a zucchini slaw. Okay, now push forward on the handle. And you can see right away that these pieces are much smaller and shorter than the first ones I did. Which is good because that will work much better for the zucchini slaw. Alright, so I'm going to finish this piece. Okay, and let's get that out of the way. And I'm going to put this down here in the bowl. Push that to the side because now I'm going to take my cabbage. Now, when you make your zucchini slaw, you can put anything that you want to. Maybe you like onions or carrots or bell peppers or whatever you like to go in is fine. Um, I like to put some red cabbage in mine. 
tail. I'm going to use the same slice that I had, put this on here, and center it on that circular hole. And then again, just press forward. And you can see it doesn't take any time at all if you've got all kinds of shredded cabbage. And it's, it's shredded nicely because they're all the same thickness. And so it makes a, makes a great addition to your slaw. Okay, well the other thing that I like to put in my slaw is some apple. So let's go ahead and add a little apple to the slaw. Now when you're doing an apple, I like to go ahead and core the apple because this little slicer that cuts out the core is not really big enough to cut the entire core out of an apple. So I like to take my apple core and do that first. So there we are. And I didn't quite cut it straight. So I'm just going to do a little better job here. Can you see that? Okay. Okay. All right. So now, let me put that on here. Again, now I've got a hole, but I'm still going to put that on the circular cutter for the core. And I'm going to add just a little bit of, uh, of uh, spiral, uh, spirals here. Sorry. Okay. Now, I could have cut that down the side and would have made these shorter, which I probably should have done. But in any case, here you have zucchini, slaw, and apples, and just in a few minutes cut up into a beautiful slaw. So I usually take that and put it in the bowl. Okay. And sprinkle on top of that. I like to put um, some craisins or dried cranberries and some chopped up nuts. So there you have it. Just in a few minutes, a beautiful uh, zucchini slaw that is absolutely delicious. Okay, now let me put this to the side. And I want to stop at this point in time and show you just how easy it is to clean this slicer. So you want to get it unstuck from the counter and they provide these little tabs on the bottom that you can wiggle to the side and that will loosen it up. Do that on each leg and it comes right off the counter. So then I take the blade out. And sometimes if it doesn't want to come, I push on the back a little bit because it fits in there very tightly. And if you wash it just as soon as you finish, cleanup is very easy. I have a little toothbrush here to make sure I'm not standing in the way. A little toothbrush and I just brush it off. And there it is. That easy. Okay, this part also. And just rinse that off. Side. And the same thing here. Rinse it. And you're good to go. Okay, now, when I put it back on the counter, I like to make sure that the bottom of the feet are dry so that it will stick to the counter. Okay, so you go through the same thing again, push down each leg. There it is, good and tight. Okay, so that's how easy cleanup is. Now, let me show you another thing that I think is just delicious and fun, and that is the uh, sweet potato fries. So this is the other blade. This is what they call the chipper blade. So it makes the slices and the spirals just a little bit thicker. Okay, so let me get the sweet potato. And I've already um, peeled it. And if you want those to be a little bit shorter, which is probably a good idea for, for the sweet potato fries, because I'm just going to cut down one side of it. Cut down about half an inch. You can see how hard it is to cut a sweet potato with a knife. I'm trying to make sweet potato fries, it's quite a job. But with this, it's not so difficult. So I'm going to stick it on there, push the prongs into the other end, and then Remember to always push forward with this handle. Do not use a cranking handle to turn it forward. And there you are. Before you know it, you've got a bowl full of curly sweet potatoes. Now I like to take these 
and put them in a in a skillet with just a little bit of butter and saute them. They cook very quickly because they're sliced thin. Saute them, and then I sprinkle on a lot of cinnamon and just a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of salt, and they are absolutely delicious. Okay, so let me just take this off here. So I can, uh, go on to our next blade, and that would be the flat blade. Whoops, got it going everywhere, don't I? I usually am not quite this messy. I usually try to clean things up in between, but in order to save time, we're going to just proceed. Okay, now here is the rest of the apple that I was slicing earlier. This is one thing I love to do with this, and that is to make the some of this off of here. Make the thin apple slices. Okay, okay. This is the flat blade, and so what you end up with here are just spirals of apple slices, very thinly sliced. And these are great for making what, what I call fried apples. We used to have fried apples when I was a kid, and my mom would take big slices of apples and go with the peel on and put them in a frying pan with lots of butter and brown sugar. And I try to do a little bit better than that. I usually take better than that in the sense that it's healthier. Um, like for each apple, I use about a teaspoon of butter or a teaspoon of coconut oil, put them in the frying pan, and then just saute them until they're soft. It doesn't take very long because they're so thinly sliced. Then I can sprinkle just about a teaspoon of brown sugar on those, and um, they are delicious. Now, if you want to make it into even more of a dessert, then you can take either some crumbled up graham crackers or some granola, sprinkle on top, and then just a touch of whipped cream, which makes a a beautiful dessert, kind of like apple pie, but not nearly the calories of apple pie. Okay, so one more quick thing with this blade, again the flat blade. If you want it to do, this is just a regular potato. This would be great. Also, uh, for making fried potatoes, and probably this should be cut down the side. I forgot about that, but you may want to cut it down the side like I showed you before so the pieces are not quite so long. This would make great uh, fried potatoes as well, or lay these in the oven um, and do like oven fries. So that would be delicious as well. Okay, I have one more thing I want to show you, which is a discovery that I made by accident, but it is the greatest thing ever because I want to show you what to do with an onion. I hate peeling and dicing onions because I always cry when I do it and uh, so I don't like to do it. I find myself using dried onions or um, yeah, change the bite. Yeah, or doing things that um, you know, to avoid cutting up onions. So I'm going to go back to my original shredder blade, put that back in there. And I don't need to slice the onion down the side because of the layers. It's going to come up in small pieces anyway. But I'm going to put the onion on here, and I'm going to show you a discovery that I made, which is amazing. It's worth, it was worth the price of the slicer to me to be able to do this. So I'm going to slice the onion. This is the absolute greatest version of, for no tears, onion slicing. Now. I have a bunch of spirals here, and what I did when I was first did this, I was playing, I guess, and I, I did an onion, and I thought, well, I don't have any use for that, but I didn't want to waste it, so I just took it and put it in a plastic bag and threw it in the freezer, and then that evening, I decided to make spaghetti sauce, and I remember the onion that was in there, so I went to the refrigerator and got it, so hang on, I'll do that. And when I got it out of the freezer, I thought, well, I don't really need to thaw this because I'm just going to throw it in the spaghetti sauce and it will cook anyway. So I started mashing down on it to separate it. And what I realized is I was breaking the onions into little pieces. And before I know it, I have a bag full of diced onions. And I have not shed a single tear in doing it. I cut it on the spiral slicer, I froze it for a little bit, and then when you when you mash on it, 
it just breaks into little pieces. So there is a bag of beautifully diced onions. That was worth the price to slice with me. Okay, I think that's all I need to show you with the blade. Just a couple more points here to bring up. Um, this is made out of plastic, and that may be a concern to some. I know you can buy them made out of stainless steel, but they cost about, I don't know, close to $200, I think, for one of those. <clears throat> so, but this one, if you're concerned about the plastic, it is a very hard plastic, and it's EPA-free. But I think the first or second day that I had this, I picked it up. Oops, it sticks really well. <laughs> okay. I picked it up, and then, there we go. Um, and I held it like this, and this thing slid out and crashed to the floor, on our tile floor, but it did not break or chip or crack or anything. So it is a very hard plastic as well. Um, sometimes you may be cutting up vegetables that may stay in the plastic. Like um, sometimes the sweet potatoes will stay in the plastic, but as you can see, if you just keep using it, keep washing it, then those stains uh, go away. So, so anyway, this is a fantastic addition to your kitchen. Uh, I like using it. I, I have a mandolin slicer, but I don't use it very often because I'm always afraid of cutting myself. I have a food processor. I don't use that very often because I don't like to clean it. So this one has been fantastic. Um, I use it all the time, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. And so you can get creative and, and come up with other things to do uh, than what I have shown you today. So I hope this video has been helpful to you, and um, I thank you for watching.